But I will tell you, the experience that really made me decide that I was on the wrong side, uh, I was back in Tennessee visiting my parents, and I uh, picked up my hometown newspaper, and I read about something called a healthcare expedition that was being held a few miles from where I grew up. And I noticed that the organizers were was this, this, this group called Remote Area Medical, and it was started a few, several years ago to fly doctors from the U.S. to the Amazon and to Africa to take doctors there to provide free medical care to people who didn't have access to care at all. Well, this organization realized pretty quickly that we have a great and growing need in this, in this country to provide care to our own people. I hate to admit this, but in my, in my corporate job in, in a skyscraper in Philadelphia, I just had, was, had let myself become removed from the reality of what, so, what happens in so many people's lives. But this experience brought it home to me. It was being, this expedition was being held at a county fairgrounds in Wise County, Virginia, in the southwestern part of the state, the southern Appalachians. I walked through the fairground gates and was just absolutely stunned at what I saw. It was a life-changing experience. It was truly my road to Damascus experience. I saw hundreds, actually thousands of people who were standing in line to get care that was being provided by doctors who were providing their time uh, over a three-day period of time. Uh, people were standing in line in the rain. Many of them had slept in their cars. Many of them had driven from Ohio and West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia. They had waited in line, they'd gotten up before dawn to stand in line to get a number so that they could be assured of getting inside the fairground gates. Once inside there, they had to stand in other long lines to get care that was being provided in animal stalls and in barns. And it was more than I could bear. Um, it brought it home to me, what happens to so many people. And I learned that a lot of those people had insurance. They were in the kinds of plans that I spoke about the kinds of plans that the insurance companies want to move us all into so that we all will be underinsured. 25 million of us are there already. If they get their way with the legislation in Washington, we'll all be there, folks. We'll all be there. Yes. Yes. They want to move us there, so they will, pay, they will have to pay. They won't have to pay for our care when we need it because that means they will be able to send more of, of your premium dollars to shareholders. Since 1993, the amount of money that we pay in premiums that's used to pay for medical care has dropped from 95 cents to about 80 cents a day. That has happened as three things have happened. Our health insurance companies uh, that we used to think of as nonprofit organizations have converted rapidly to for-profit organizations. There's been a great consolidation in the industry. One out of every three of us that has insurance is enrolled in a health care plan managed by just seven of the largest for-profit insurance companies, two of which I used to work for, Cigna and Humana. Uh, so they have grown into a cartel of big health insurance companies. And they pretty much control what goes on in Washington, to tell you the truth, and, and to be very blunt with you. Uh, but there's also been something else. There's been concentration in the marketplace. Uh, we do not have the kinds of choices that they think that we do, or we think that we do, and that they try to make us think that we do. Most, in most markets, just one or two big insurance companies dominate. And that is, again, something that has happened over the last several years. And it's all for the benefit of the insurance companies, because they're able to, to send more and more of your premium dollars to pay corporate executives or to send to shareholders. That is not sustainable. We cannot continue to let that happen.